All right, so we are back and we have the two points that we, uh, in the earlier video, we learned how to put points on the, on the screen. The points are the most basic elements of Euclidean geometry. And so we're going to begin working with these points. I'm going to put this point at four, uh, two, four, and I'm going to put this point at six, seven. And the next thing that we need to learn is how to, uh, how to put, draw some segments, lines, arrays, and vectors. Um, we're going to start with segments. Segments are under lines. And if that option is not showing up, then it's probably because it should be showing up, but uh, if, if it's not, then it's because of this button, more button. You have to click on the more button and it shows up. It shows you a lot more uh, tools and options as you can see. All right, so let's begin with the segment. A line segment is a part of a line that's between two points. It's defined by two points. And so when I click on it, it defines that point. Again, I can actually draw a line segment by selecting two points that are not even there. So I can create two points by clicking on line segment and then click and I can actually create a line segment. And it's going to try and uh, want to snap to a grid, which is also good. So let's draw some line segments. Now, as I draw a line segment, it automatically doesn't show me the coordinates for the points that it's contained within, nor does it show me anything about the name of this line segment. So the line segment here between point A and B is called F. The line segment between C and D is called G. And the line segment between E and F is called H. Just as we found some more information, oh, if you make a mistake, press undo, if you're done drawing line segments, press the escape button or click on the move tool so that you can start moving things as you need to. I'll move this out of the way just a little bit. So just as we found information about the names of the points, uh, the, the points themselves, and we went and clicked on right clicked and then clicked on settings to enable the name and value for the points, we can do the same for the line segment itself. I'm going to right click and settings and it's showing me the settings for line segment F. It also says it's segment AB. It's because it's between A and B. Again, it's only showing the name. I want to change it to name and value. And it's going to show me the value for this segment. So what, what do we think this value actually means? Well, let's see. The horizontal distance between point A and point B, just the horizontal distance, is 1, 2, 3, 4. And the vertical distance is 1, 2, 3. Hmm, 3, 4, and it's trying to look like a triangle. Does that remind us of something? Or well, it should remind us of the 3, 4, 5 rule for the Pythagorean theorem. And so 3 squared plus 4 squared, and as soon as we take the square root of that, we get 5, which is the distance between the two points. That's the distance formula uh, using the Pythagorean theorem. And so this must be the length of the line segment. So the length of the sine segment is 5. I can do the same here. Since my settings are on, I'm going to try and click here to see if I can get settings for G. And yes, I do. So maybe it's a good idea to keep the settings span on. And G, it's also showing this name. I'm going to change it to name and value. And it also shows me five. I didn't mean for it to be five. Let's see if I can change it. All right, this is better. Uh, maybe I'll put it over here. There you go. Well, let's put it over here. And I can move these things around. As long as I have the move button clicked or chosen, I can drag or select objects. Right. There's a way to change this number from showing uh, so many decimals. We can truncate them or, or uh, round them. Uh, we'll talk about that in the in the upcoming videos. All right, and let's go ahead and start. Uh, go ahead and show the name and value for the age as well. Right, there you go. All right, 
So we had some points. Now we have some line segments. And as we can see, the length of the line segment or the distance between the points C and D or any of these points, as the point is moved, the distance between the points and the length of the segment changes. Now let's talk about the next item, which is a line. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some of these line segments. And the way we do them is by selecting the line segment and clicking the delete button. Select the line segment, click the delete button, and the delete button. I also don't want point E and F here, so I can simply Go to edit and click on select object. And now I can select multiple objects and delete them at the same time. Please don't do that unless you wanted to. Uh, if you make a mistake, you can simply undo or redo. There you go. Alrighty. So now let's talk about lines. We did line segment by selecting line segment. Line segment is a segment of a line between two points. Line is a line that runs through two points. So what is the basic difference between a line and a line segment? The basic difference between a line and line segment is that a segment is finite. It starts at a point and ends at another point. A line is infinite. It goes in both directions. It is defined by two points. So as one point moves, the line moves. The slope of the line changes. So that's the basic difference between line and line segment. Line is finite. Line, line segment is finite, I'm sorry. Line is infinite. Now here's something. What is array then? Well, let's draw some points and let's draw array. Could we just draw array without drawing points? Let's see. I'm going to click on array and I'm going to click right here to draw a point and now I'm drawing array. This array is beginning at point C and it's going through point D. Let me go ahead and click on the move button so that I can move. So then what's the difference between a line and array? Well, a line is infinite in both directions. Array is infinite in only one direction. This is the terminal side of the ray. This is where the ray terminates. All right. And as the point D moves, so does the slope of the ray. The same happens with C. If I move C, it's going to also change the slope of the ray. All right. Let's explore just a little bit more. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clear everything on the screen. And to do that, I'm going to go to the menu and click on Clear All. Now, if you want to save this, then you can save it, but you'll have to be logged into GeoGebra. Um, there's a video about that as to how to make an account and all that. Uh, but right now, I'm not going to save anything. I just want to get to the next page, a clear page. So I'm going to click on Don't Save. I'm going to click on Tools. Let's begin by drawing a point. This is a quick review. And here's my point. Let me zoom in and move this down here. I'm going to make a point. I want the point to be the first thing, so I'm going to put the point right here. Next, I want to make a line segment. So I'll go to line segments. Where segments? Oh, right here. And I'm going to draw a line segment. There you go. Next, I want to draw a line. I'm going to go select the line tool and I'm going to draw a line. 
There you go. And then I would like to draw a ray. I'll draw an array. Right. I'm going to go select the move to click on F so that I can see its properties. And then I'm going to say I want to see the name and value. So now I can see the, the length of this line segment. I'm going to do the same for A and say show me the properties. Now I don't want to look at the, the coordinates for the B and C, D and E um, because when you're when I'm working with the line segment, the more important thing is the the length of the line segment. Do you see a name for this line? I don't see a name. Oh, there you go, right here, G. It's far, far away. I don't know why it's not moving, but uh, it's here. It's G. And so I'm going to click on it and click on name and value. And instead of giving me a distance, what GeoGebra is telling me is the equation for this line. And so 0.25 is the slope of this line, uh, which is basically one fourth. Well, let's see. One fourth means we rise one and run four. Is that what's happening? Rise one and run four. One, two, three, four. So that is what's happening. All right, let's go to H and see what we get if we say name and value. And again, we get the slope. Why didn't we get the distance between F and G? Well, we didn't get a distance between F and G because this is a ray and it's infinite in one direction. The same reason why, I didn't, why we didn't get the distance between D and E because G is a line. It's infinite in both directions. The reason why we got distance for segment F is because F is finite between B and C.